Hello guys, Devoki here once again. And yes, I got my hair cut, as you guys can see. Um, if you guys have been following my channel for a little bit, you know that I was growing out my hair quite a bit, and it was getting long, but I got it cut, and it was a very unexpected, I guess, turn of events. Um, and I traveled 2,000 miles for some reason to get my hair cut, but we'll get into that. It was quite an adventure, and I learned a lot on this journey, I guess, to get my hair cut, which of course that wasn't the main goal, but it happened very unexpectedly. And I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, for you guys that didn't know, I was on the road for a little bit and that's why I wasn't making videos for a while. I was actually planning on being on the road for a lot longer than I was. Um, I think I was only gone for about two weeks, but I was planning on being on the road for about like I don't know, in my mind was like six months, you know, like months and months and months. I was just going to be Airbnb hopping, traveling around the States and just kind of seeing and adventuring around. And, you know, that's just something that I really wanted to do because I was able to work remote and I thought it'd be a really awesome opportunity to just be able to to have this adventure. So I had a few stops already planned ahead of time, um, first being Las Vegas and this was just like purely vacation time. I wasn't going to work there and was just going to hang out in Vegas and then go to San Francisco and stay in San Francisco for three weeks. Um, so I did vlog a bit of it, of my journey, but I don't think I'm going to release the video, the full video of my whole like footage, uh, just for personal reasons. But I wanted to at least share a little bit with you guys uh, of my adventure because it's um it's a pretty big turning point in my life, I would say. I know you guys are thinking, wait a second, this guy just like went to go get a haircut. Hold on a second, like what what is this video? But it's uh yeah, like I said, I wasn't planning on getting a haircut. The haircut is probably like the the smallest thing about like the whole the whole journey here. Um so I wanna go in and start and hopefully I don't talk too long. Uh, I don't wanna make this video longer than thirty minutes, but yeah, I wanna start from kind of the beginning of my journey. Um, so I took off for Vegas and that was my first time in Vegas after 21. So it was pretty, pretty intense and incredible, really great experience. Of course. Um, you know, being there after 21 is a lot different than when you're there when you're like 10 or 12, right. And just playing carnival games. I don't know how many of you guys experienced being in Vegas pre 21 and then post 21, but yeah, it was it was a uh, it was definitely intense. And you know, like as I'm talking, I'm playing with um, actually <laughs> a uh, a chip that I was that I was using for blackjack when I was playing the blackjack tables at the Cosmopolitan. But um, yeah, it was it was fun. You know, it was definitely an experience. I met some amazing people, and then um, I was uh, I was I was just kind of living the Vegas life, you know, I was kind of making the excuse that I was in Vegas and I was able to kind of just party it up hard. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm in Vegas and this is what, what we do. So, um, yeah, partying hard, you know, spending money, eating, eating some amazing food. I mean, Vegas has some really, really great food. I, I was eating very well in Vegas and it was really cool. Um, I was with my friends and they were, uh, they were very experienced with Las Vegas and they were showing me the ropes, I guess, of it all. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, I guess I was kind of in my mind thinking, you know, I'm partying pretty hard, but what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas was my thought. But after Vegas, we went to San Francisco, or I guess we went to Oakland for a festival. And I guess we brought Vegas with us, it felt like, like the partying, the this, the intense, the intensity of it, you know, it felt like I never left Vegas in a way when I got into California. I don't want to say too much details and name names because just for privacy reasons and, you know, the sake of just some things should be left unsaid, but I was, uh, I was going pretty hard, I would say, and a lot harder than normal. And, um, you know, don't get me wrong when I'm here in Colorado, when I was at the East coast, like I would party, you know, and I do like to party once in a while, I guess is like, I like to let loose and I like to, I like to have a lot of fun, which, um, there's a, of course a good balance for that. So it didn't really phase me 
when I was kind of going through these motions in in California and um, in Vegas, you know, because it just felt like it was just kind of intensified of what I would be doing here in Colorado, just like times you know, 12 or something, you know, just because I was in a different state and we were celebrating, but the celebrating lasted for like weeks and weeks, you know what I'm saying? And then one night I overdid it. I, uh, I partied a little too hard, I would say. And it was an awakening moment for me. It was a moment that I realized that I needed to leave California. I needed to leave San Francisco and come back and ground myself in Colorado. I lost my way a little bit. Um, it was a very big like awakening moment for me that I just realized that I was going down a path that I didn't want to go down. And this was all my fault. You know, there was, of course, there was like peer pressure around, but whatever. But um, it's just all on me. You know, this is, this is me. I didn't get tricked or anything like that. So it was... Um, it was, it was like a big moment in my life where I was like kind of like questioning a lot of my actions on like why, what's causing me to do this, like push myself this far. Um, and like, what, what is it that, that I'm doing? So I wanted to change my path in life. And that's why I decided to cancel my Airbnbs and just cancel my trips in general and uh, come back, come back to Colorado because there was something that wasn't feeling right inside in my heart that was telling me that I just needed to stop and reevaluate myself, my priorities before I go too deep. So I, I did get to meet some amazing, amazing people on this trip. Um, people that changed my life, people that you'll probably be seeing on this channel too, um, here and there, but I, uh, yeah, they, they definitely helped me through these dark times and pulled me out of some some really hard times for sure and helped me so I was so thankful that I got to meet these people in my life and I think actually just like everyone I met <laughs> on my trip actually was just incredible and life-changing to be honest so I, I really value and appreciate all these connections that I've made so I was driving back from San Francisco and I was on the highway and I was going towards Las Vegas east because once I need to cross Las Vegas again to get back to Colorado. Um, so I was going on the highway and I was going and then I saw an exit sign for Los Angeles that was south. And, you know, I was just going to just beeline it to Colorado from San Francisco. But actually, one of the friends that I met on this trip, he was telling me his mom cuts hair in Los Angeles. So I don't know what it was that like, like hit me, but I just like cut three lanes of traffic, did a super dangerous maneuver, you know, Tokyo drift style. And I <laughs> exited for Los Angeles, which was like six hours, um, the opposite direction of where I needed to go. And I was just like thinking to myself, what am I doing? You know, what, what exactly am I doing? But something was pulling me towards Los Angeles and it was my friend's, you know, mom, I guess, which sounds really weird, but it was her that was, um, cause I wanted to get my hair cut by her for some reason. I just felt like I need to leave something behind here. I need to shed something off my old self. Um, just for like, I guess, because I feel renewed. I feel like I need a fresh start. So I'm going to go ahead and get my hair cut. I'm just going to cut my hair. I know it was like such a little thing it felt like, but to me it was like, I wanted something to remember my trip by, you know, like this haircut, I'm going to get it here. And like the haircut is like, I mean, I, I really like it, but it's like, I could have gotten this anywhere. Right. But it was just, something was calling me in LA. So I, I just drove to LA and I got a hotel I stayed at the Ramadan for three days, actually. Um, I was gonna, just going to work there in, in the hotel for a bit while I figured out where exactly this barbershop was because I didn't even know like where in L.A. it was. I didn't even know what her name was. I just met this guy. So I messaged him and was like, yo, can your mom like cut my hair? Can you squeeze me in like for an appointment? I know it's like really last minute, and I know like she's like really busy and popular. So I was like... 
I don't know, can you just like try to squeeze me in? That'd be awesome. And he did, you know, like his mom made room for me somehow at like 1.30 p.m. on Friday. And it was like last minute and I could tell it was like really squeezed in. He's like, he messaged me a few times like saying, make sure you got to be there at 1.30 because, you know, my mom's got like appointments lined up throughout the day. I'm like, I'll be there. I'll be there. So I got the address and everything and I was staying, I, I stopped in, oh gosh, what was the, um, the city's name? Burbank, I think Burbank, California, which was like the first city that I hit from San Francisco going into LA. And I was like, all right, Burbank. So I'm stopped in here and her shop was in Irving, I think is how you pronounce it. And I never knew how big LA was, but Irving was like two hours away from Burbank. <laughs> So I was going to drive another two hours to get to my hair hair appointment, which I was like, man, what really am I doing, you know, with my life? But it was um, it was all very much needed when I was at the hotel room. So this kind of like was actually really unfortunate, but my laptop wouldn't turn on. So I wasn't able to log in for work. So I had to like call my work and everyone and be like, there's an emergency, you know, like I had to leave and uh, my laptop's not turning on. And it really sucks. So I'm going to take like unplanned PTO and all this. But I, I wasn't planning on not working. So one whole day actually in the hotel room, I was just like on my phone playing Pokemon Unite and watching Star Wars Vision. And it was probably one of the most beautiful days ever. Like I just needed a day for myself to relax and recover. And I just ate three like instant bowls of pho. <laughs> And like just junked out on Pokemon Unite on my phone. Um, And it was it was glorious because like throughout the whole trip, my whole trip, I was always with like five or ten other people. It was crazy. Like there was just so many people that I was with because I was kind of traveling with a friend. Right. That I was meeting and he just knows a lot of people. So I just was always like clumped up with so many people um and you guys know me like I need to be alone that that's just who I am and if I don't get my like valid good recharge days I'm just like I don't feel like myself you know what I'm saying so that was that was a very much needed day for me for sure and after that that was a Thursday because I wasn't working right so Friday was my 1 30 appointment so I woke up and I left for the um for my hair appointment at like 10 o'clock in the morning to make sure that I got there early enough. So I got there at 12 and like the traffic, LA traffic guys, for you guys that live in LA, kudos to you all, man. Cause goodness, driving through that is just intense. Like I had to drive through, I felt like three different cities to get there and each city had their own like theme of traffic. And I felt like had their own mood of drivers or something. And it was really interesting to kind of observe. Um, but I, I got there, I got to my hair appointment and, you know, got there two hours early. No, actually like an hour and a half early, right? 12, 1 30. And I went inside at one and she was like, she was so kind. She like, she said, Oh, you know, you're, you're my son's friend. Come, come, you know, like she like scooted me really quickly. And then she like sat me down on the bench and I felt so bad because she was like coloring two people's hairs while cutting one guy's hair at the same time. And she was a beast. You know, she did an amazing job, like just working it that was like her passion like I felt it you know I don't know if you guys might or remember me telling you guys about another haircut story now I'm thinking about it I told you guys a few haircut stories <laughs> on this channel but you know like one of the best haircuts I've gotten still to this day was like the two dollar haircut in I think China somewhere where like his v-neck went down to his belly button and he was just like I don't know he he took care of me let me just say that it was it was good um and he was gorgeous too. He was he was a gorgeous man. Sorry, I'm 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 losing track. I'm losing track. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. Um, but back to this uh, to my friend's mom here. Um, you know, she got me in. She sat me down and she was like, "All right, do you have a reference picture?" Oh, that's right. So I don't like I'm not picky with my hair, right? Like my dream is to find a barber that can just like use my head as a canvas because I really don't know hairstyles or like. I didn't even like style my hair. I, I got like a haircut that I'm supposed to like style it. I don't even know how. So I just like wear it like this, I guess, <laughs> whatever this is. Um, but I pulled up a reference picture actually <laughs> of disguised toast because I really like watching his streams and I, th I think his hair looks really good. So I was like, oh, you know, like, can you cut my hair like him, you know, like this guy? And she's like, oh, 
I cut his hair. And I was like, what? And like, yeah, I cut that hair. And she like pulled up the picture of him <laughs> in her salon and actually a whole bunch of other streamers that were there. Um, and it was like crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, like what the heck? Like, okay, well, I'll just let you go at it then. Like, I guess you know what you're doing. So she, she rocked it, man. She was, she cut it and she like shampooed, she massaged and, you know, whispered sweet lullabies into my ear and you know, just like the whole nine yards. And I was like, man, this is exactly what I needed, you know? And I was always kind of concerned back like months ago when I had my hair long that I would be like really hesitant or worried to let go of my long hair. But like at that moment, I just knew, I just knew like I needed to leave like something behind and it just felt right. You know, like I, it just felt normal. Like it was supposed to happen. So yeah, she cut my hair and it was, it was incredible. It felt amazing. It felt a lot lighter. And then I drove 16 hours back to Colorado from Los Angeles after my haircut. Um, and that, that drive though, that drive, man, I did a lot of reflecting on that drive. I think that drive was where I learned or I don't know if I even learned, but just kind of dug the deepest about my life. All right. And I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about this, like, I guess this wrong turn that I made. And I don't think actually there is any like wrong turns in life. Okay. Cause to be honest, there is just one destination. I'm sorry, this is going to sound really bleak, but it's the end, right? Every turn will lead to it. It depends on what kind of route you want to take, what kind of life you want to live and your goals, your desires, your morals, your passions, that your turns will seem a lot more correct or a lot more wrong in your life. Of course, there's a lot more destructive turns, you know, that you can make. So I was driving in Utah and this really hit me because I was driving in Utah and whenever I drive for like a few hundred miles at a time, like if there's like, you know, my GPS says, all right, 350 miles, you just head north. I'm like, okay, and I'll turn off my GPS, right? Just because I don't need to drain my battery. I know I'm just going to be hitting this road for 300 some odd miles. And um, yeah, I'll just turn it on in a few hours or whatever. So I was zoning out and I was doing one of those long stretches in Utah. And I was going through some mountains, some beautiful, beautiful mountainous roads, guys. Like Utah has some really, really beautiful beautiful scenes there um and that was like one thing too just just driving can I just just back up a little bit driving was probably one of my favorite parts about this trip I love driving I love driving through just different areas and seeing new places and like going through like really I guess quiet rural places like that you know there's not a lot of people at and um just the scenic views that you hit and just the different like themes that each state has you know like you're trying to pick out what each state is kind of like known for and just kind of their their scenes their their pride you know that they they have to, to offer um and that's just something i loved loved throughout this trip it was beautiful but anyways i was zoning out zoning out through utah going north hitting all these mountainous roads i love mountain driving it's one of my favorites just going through weaving and hitting these beautiful scenes and then you know all of a sudden you know I was doing a lot of reflecting about like what happened in this past few weeks and how far I've fallen and how am I going to pick myself up and then as I was thinking about all of this I realized my mountains disappeared I was like where the heck did my mountains go I was looking around and it was just flat lands I was like this doesn't seem right I'm supposed to be hitting Colorado, you know, coming east, I remember, and I'm supposed to be, you know, hitting those Rocky Mountains, which I got to pass through to get back home. Like, I lost my mountains. There's no mountains to be seen. And then I turned on my GPS and I realized I'm going 20 miles too far north. I was supposed to go east 20 miles ago in the back. And I missed my turn completely. But everything seemed right, right? Like, everything seemed good until I lost my mountains. And, you know, I looked at the GPS. It said I can keep continuing to go north for two and a half hours extra onto my trip. Like if I continued on my path, it would be two and a half hours extra, which is crazy. That's a lot of time. Or I could just turn around and backtrack 20 miles. And I was actually trying to justify me continuing to go north. 
like the thought of turning around and backtracking was just so disgusting to me for some reason. It's like, I've already seen this. I just was from there. Like I'm looking back in my rear view mirror and I'm like, I was just there. Like I can't even see 20 miles back and I have to drive all of that again. Like I was like trying to think like, you know, I've never driven this way before. Like I could go hit like Idaho or something or a different state up above and I'll get back in Colorado at like midnight. And I always wanted to drive through the mountains at midnight or something, you know? And like I was like actually trying to justify adding two and a half hours extra onto my trip. And I was like, you're being dumb. And I just flipped a Yui, you know, and I just turned around and I just went back to 20 miles, got onto I-70 East and got back on track. And I realized that was my life right there. Now this trip, Las Vegas, Oakland, San Francisco, that wasn't the wrong turn. I made the wrong turn a long time ago. Okay. That night that I like awoke and I realized that it was something was wrong. That's when I realized my mountains were gone. And I think, I don't know. I'm just curious. Do you guys have those moments, you know, when you guys lose your mountains in your life, you know, when you really realize that this is not the path that you should be taking, you know, and that it might be beneficial for you to backtrack just a little bit to figure out where you went wrong and to turn to, to make the, the more correct turn. You know, as, as I say, you know, there's no really wrong turn. Of course, that's, that's really debatable when I say that loud, because I really do feel like I've made some wrong turns in life, but, um, they, they're turns that gets you to the places that you need to be, you know, all the turns led me here. And I'm proud of who I am and I strive to be always better. So I want to not regret the turns that I did make in my life because that's not fair to who I am today. And that's another thing is like going down that path that I was going down that night. If I stayed there, that city would have swallowed me up. I felt it. I wouldn't have come back. And it's just, it's just the type of person that I was. And I think the darkness that I was dealing with inside that I don't think, I don't think it would have been good for me. You know, it's <laughs> obviously, but I wouldn't have been proud of the type of person that I am. And I want to be the best person that I can be, not just for myself, but for others, because I want to be and provide the best person for others of, or the best version of myself for others. Um, and I say that a lot in my videos, but it's just, it's, it's not fair for others. It's not fair for me. And if I see where I can kind of, I guess, tighten up my life, I definitely want to do that. You know, life is short and I want to live the best that I can. So, um, yeah, that's, that was it. You know, that's kind of my story, my journey of my 2000 mile haircut. And the reason why I know it was 2000 miles cause I was sitting in the parking lot and I reset my little speedometer or pedometer mile pedometer, <laughs> the mile measure thing, um, right before I left for my trip to Las Vegas. And I know the 2000 miles weren't like one way shot to the haircut, but it was the whole journey to it, like Las Vegas. And then we picked up some friends in LA, we got up to San Francisco and then I went back to LA. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of like driving and traveling, but altogether it took me 2000 miles to get there from where I was. So that's, that's where the 2000 miles came from. And, you know, I didn't really kind of talk about the people that I met along the way in this video, um, which I can definitely get more into later on after I receive their permission. But it was, um, they changed my life. You know, everyone that I met changed my life. And I think I am so thankful for, for every encounter that I've had and this, the love that I felt throughout my trip and my journey. So yeah, that was, that was it. Man, I think I hit about 30 minutes here in this video. Um, anyways, that's a, that was kind of my little podcast talk here. Debogi's talk. I don't, I don't even know. I just wanted to share you guys and update you guys. Cause I like to try to be as transparent as I can on this channel. Um, just a lot of the reflecting helps me grow and I hope that some of it can benefit you guys wherever you are in your life. Just know that you have people that care about you 
the people that love you and you're never alone. So don't feel that way. Reach out if you're in trouble and always do things with love. Always, always do things with love because there's not enough love in this world. And I think, I think we got to share more of it. That's all. Well, guys, I'll, I'll stop talking. I'll stop talking. Much love, one love, guys, like always. This has been Deboki. I'll be seeing you guys later. Goodbye.